this lecture, we introduce the concept of a continuous histogram. That is, a histogram that is a continuous function of image intensity, and we illustrate the integral and derivative relationships between the normalized histogram, or frequency histogram, and the cumulative frequency distribution. The normalized histogram, or frequency histogram, tells us the proportion of pixels that contain an image intensity with a particular value. If 1 million pixels take the value of 25, and there are 10 million pixels total, then the normalized histogram for the intensity value 25 would be equal to 1 tenth, or 0 0.1. In general, the total number of possible intensity values is finite. For an image that uses 8 bits to quantize its intensities, for instance, the number of possible intensity values is 256. To gain insight into how we might use intensity transformations to manipulate an image's histogram, however, it's often convenient to model the histogram as a function of a continuous variable. That is, we'll assume that image intensities take all values between 0 and some maximum intensity I max. Well, let's take a look now at a continuous histogram. So let's let the function f, lowercase f, as a function of intensity I, be a continuous normalized histogram or a continuous frequency histogram. This is a function of I, and it'll take values for intensities that range over the interval from 0 to I max, and outside of that interval it'll be 0. Now a representative function that we might associate with one of these histograms might look like this. Now this continuous histogram doesn't tell us the proportion of pixels that take a particular intensity value. For instance, if we call this intensity value I1, this intensity value I2, this value does not tell us the proportion of pixels that take the value I1, and this value of the histogram does not tell us the proportion of pixels to take the value of I2. Rather, this area, which would be computed as the integral from I1 to I2 of this continuous function, that would tell us the proportion of pixels that have an intensity value between I1 and I2. Now we'll put two constraints on the continuous histogram. One would be that the continuous histogram evaluated at any intensity value I is always going to be greater than or equal to zero. And then if we look at the proportion of pixels whose intensities take a value somewhere between zero and the maximum intensity, so we integrate this histogram over that interval, well that'll be equal to 1. That is, all of the pixels take some value between 0 and I max. So all of these numbers, the proportion between any interval within 0 and I max, this number would be less than or equal to 1 and greater than or equal to 0. Now the cumulative frequency tells us the proportion of pixels that take values less than or equal to a particular intensity. So let's put an axis up and take a look at the cumulative frequency. So the symbol I'll use for that is a uppercase F and a representative plot of the cumulative frequency might look something like this. where when we get out to the value for the intensity equal to I max, the value for the cumulative frequency would be equal to 1. Now the relationship between the cumulative frequency and the normalized frequency or uh, the normalized histogram or the, the frequency histogram, we can write down two relationships. 
One, the cumulative frequency evaluated at a particular intensity i, so the proportion of pixels that have an intensity less than or equal to i is equal to the integral from 0 to i of the frequency histogram. And so now we're using i as the variable to denote intensity that we're evaluating the cumulative frequency at. So we'll need to use a different variable inside the integral, and I'll just use a dummy variable x. So that's one relationship. The other relationship, if we take the derivative of the cumulative frequency, so if we differentiate this with respect to the intensity, well, that's going to be equal to the frequency histogram, or the normalized histogram, at that intensity. So those two relationships tell us how the frequency histogram, or the normalized histogram, is related to the cumulative frequency. Well, what we'd like to do next is just take a look at a couple of examples. Well, for our first example, let's let the frequency histogram, the normalized histogram, let's let that be a linear function, straight line basically. So it'll start here, increase linearly till we get to this point. Now let's see what we think the value would need to be at this, at this point. Well, the total area under the frequency histogram needs to be equal to 1, so that's the area under this region. Well, that area is 1 half of this height times this distance, so this point must be equal to 2 over i max. And it turns out that the mathematical form for this particular frequency fun uh, histogram function would be 2 times the intensity divided by i max squared. Now, for this particular function, the cumulative frequency. would be equal to the integral from 0 to i of 2x over i max squared dx. And again, this is the integral from 0 to i of the frequency histogram f evaluated at x. Well, if we carry out this integral, we'll find that the answer is i over i max quantity squared. So if we go over here, plot that as a function of i, it will begin at 0 and it'll be a quadratic function that increases and at this value when i is equal to i max we'll have a value of 1. Well, Let's take a look at another example. Suppose in this case we'll let the frequency histogram be a quadratic function. So let's give it this form. Cubed. Well, if this is our normalized histogram or our frequency histogram, it's going to be a quadratic function, and it'll increase like this, and then when it gets out here to the value of i max,
it's going to have a value. Well, if we put i max here, we'll see that'll be equal to 3 over i max. So let's determine what the cumulative frequency would look like. It's going to be the integral from 0 to i of now 3x squared over i max to the third dx. And if you work through that integral, you'll find that the answer is i over i max raised to the third power. So the cumulative frequency in that case is going to look like this. So now it's going to go up like q, uh, the third power, and of course at that value we'll have i max over i max raised to the third and that'll still be equal to 1.